Oh, hello! My name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Whoa. So yeah, another month of buying books. More books than I thought I did, as per usual. I'm not gonna bore you with the normal kind of hand wringing here, so let's just let's just get right into the damage, shall we? Because I mean, literally, this is a month where I I could not hold all of the books I bought for my thumbnail, so like shit got real. Let's just get into this. Okay, so first up we have a purchase of a book that I really, really enjoy. So this is a book I've already read, so I'm not adding to my TBR. But I saw this on Book Outlet. It was a nice hardback copy of The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. This is not an unusual opinion to have, but this is one of the best memoirs I've ever read. I think that they either made or are going to make some sort of adaptation of it. I'm not totally sure. But anyway, um, I'm sure that would be well worth looking into because this is this is a great book. Um, if you're looking for a memoir about a fucked up childhood that I don't think like dwells on it or like um, fetishizes it almost, then I think that this is a really a good place to go. Okay, and then uh, you saw me haul Truth Witch and Wind Witch in a previous haul, I think maybe February's. I read Truth Witch in the month of April and loved it or well I really really liked it how about that and I'm excited to keep going with Wind Witch and I realized that the one that I did not have was Sight Witch so I rectified that got this off Amazon um it's a I think it's a prequel and it's I would call it a short novel I think it's like 240 ish pages something like that and uh yeah I'm excited to get to this eventually I also pre-ordered Blood Witch which I believe is coming out sometime in the fall maybe winter so yeah adding this to my TBR. Next up, I pre-ordered How to Be Safe from Tom McAllister. I put this on my list of most anticipated reads of 2018 at the beginning of the year, and I put this even on the short list of ones that I wanted to make sure I got to. Um, he's a podcaster I really enjoy on the Book Fight podcast, and I was intrigued by the premise, which is basically about how a teacher at a high school gets suspended and then somehow is associated with the shooting or is suspected to be associated with the shooting that happens at that high school afterwards. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to get to this, I think probably sometime in the next couple of months. And then I got a, a hardback replacement copy for three paperbacks that I have. Now, um, I wrote a paper in grad school about divine comedy um, and I have a soft spot in my heart for it. I am sad to be get, getting rid of the three paperbacks that I have just because the translation there was by Dorothy Sayers, who I absolutely love, but it's, um, she, what she did basically was try to translate the poetry aspect, so keeping the rhyme scheme. So it's not necessarily that faithful of a translation. Um, and I just liked having a hardback that was all, all three books in one. So glad to have this, though a little sad to get rid of my paperbacks. And then I have a very frivolous purchase from Book Depository. Um, I really wanted to read The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch because I've just heard so many great things about it from people here on BookTube who I really trust. And I decided if I was gonna get it, there I, I feel like there's a good chance I'm gonna like the series that I'm gonna wanna keep buying in the series. And I just, I like the UK edition better. So I got this off Book Depository. It's, it's very pretty. And I think I'm going to do a buddy read of this in June. So looking forward to getting to this actually pretty, pretty darn soon, all things considered. I also have an addition to my Everyman's Library collection that I'm working on, which is The Stranger by Albert Camus. Now, I already own this book in the French, La Trangère by Albert Camus. I, I minored in French in college, so this is about to sound really pretentious, and I don't mean it this way. I mean this as a way to show the fact that reading things and not your native language is, is not easy and not optimal sometimes. So I have read actually a lot of French literature in French, but I think often I don't really, I, I've read it, but like I'm sure that I'm missing actually a lot of subtleties because even though I'm reading in the original language and so therefore in theory uh, am picking up on things that the English translation doesn't have, I'm also reading in a language that's not native to me and therefore that I even if there are subtleties, I may be missing them. So I'm actually kind of glad to have this in the English because like I'd kind of like to do a comparison reading. Um, so anyway, I saw this at the used bookstore and I was like, oh yeah, I wanna, I wanna add that to the pile of my Everyman's Library stuff. Okay, and next up we have Badass Zombie Slayers. So we've got Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. This is another one that I've been really looking forward to. It was on my most anticipated list. And yeah, I just think I'm really gonna enjoy this. I'm hoping to get to it in the next couple of months. Um, I'm, 
you know, it's been an interesting reading year for me in terms of like my procurement because normally if I buy things new and hardback, I feel some pressure to go ahead and read them. And that is kind of infringing a little bit on my mood reading. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. So I'm, I'm lessening the pressure on myself for some of these things that I knew I was gonna pick up when they were new. Um, and so I do wanna get to this sooner, but I'm not like, I'm mentally telling myself I don't have to get to it right away because I think that's been sort of like fucking with my head. So anyway, that's a side note. I am very excited to get to this, but I wanna wait till like the mood strikes and I'm genuinely like excited in that moment to dive in. And then next I have like a whole little pile of JD Robb slash Nora Roberts. So let, let me tell you why I did this. So these all came from my used bookstore, so I didn't pay any money for any of these because I have a shit ton of trade there because I like to unhaul and uh, and get that trade and, and that sweet, sweet cash money. Um, so anyway, first of all, I got a JD Robb, Divided in Death. This is the next one in the In Death series that I need to read. And the hold situation of the library is weird. Like, I was going to have to wait a very long time for it. So I decided I just would go ahead, since I could get it for free, I decided to just go ahead and pick it up and skip the library wait. So I will own this long enough to read it and then take it back to the used bookstore. And then the rest of these um, I picked up because I've been, I, I write for fun for me. Um, I've been working on something that I was struggling to figure out why I didn't think it was quite working the way I wanted it to. And I've recently realized that it, what I'm trying to do would work best as sort of like a suspense and not as like a mystery or a thriller. So I wanted to read some Nora Roberts standalone suspense because pacing wise, this is very similar to what I think I need to do. Um, so I got, I have this as an ebook, but this is my favorite Nora Roberts suspense, The Obsession. And um, I, I want to like mark this up and figure out exactly how she's kind of doing the pacing in this. So I got this even though I've read it before. Um, I may have even unhauled it. I may have had a hardback of it at some point and taken it back. But anyway, um, I have this and, and I'm gonna be using it to kind of dissect it. And then she has so many standalone romantic suspense slash suspense um, that she's written. And I've realized that I tend to like the ones that are post like 2003 to 2005 ish better than the earlier ones. Um, I think her writing improves quite a bit in that time in terms of characterization. So um, I, I mean, not that she didn't have some good ones before that, but just from the smattering that I've read, I think I tend to prefer her kind of more recent ones. Um, so when I was there, I found a few that I thought had had sounded interesting to me and were relatively more recent, so I'll see how I do with these. I got Carolina Moon, Blue Dahlia, The Villa, and Angels Fall. So I'm excited to get to these, especially as the summer's coming up and you know, when you're traveling, I kind of like something a little bit lighter to read. Um, but anyway, I just, this is kind of like what I'm working on with writing. So I think this will be sort of a good kind of read along um, in time periods where I'm working on that particular writing project. So uh, looking forward to getting to these eventually. And then last month I read a book called Sharp uh, by, oh, Michelle Dean, by Michelle Dean. And, um, I was really inspired by it. It was essentially about various like female intellectual figures of the 20th century and kind of like what united them and, and how they kind of existed in the world. And it really inspired me that I want to read more essays from those women who are sort of like foundational, not even feminist thinkers, because I think a lot of them even sometimes explicitly did not identify as feminist. But um, I think just like women intellectuals and um, formative formative people who have shaped feminism, even if they didn't mean to. So, um, and just generally the world. So um, I wanna start buying collections from them every month. So the first one I did was this one from Hannah Arendt, Essays in Understanding 1930 to 1954. I picked this because apparently, because I in, in the book Sharp, there was an allusion to an essay that she wrote about the immigrant experience that I thought was like, just sounded amazing and like very relevant <laughs> in, in these times, um, thinking about what it means to be an immigrant. Um, and why one becomes one and how one is treated when one flees. Um, so I'm excited to get to this and then I'm excited to continue to build my collection of essays from some badass women like Joan Didion and Susan Sontag and Dorothy Parker and lots of people. So this is the first in what I hope will be a long running collection. Okay, and then I've got two books, the first two in a series, I, similar to what I did with Truth Witch and Wind Witch a couple months ago. Um, I got Walk on Earth a Stranger and Like a River Glorious by Ray Carson. Now the reason I did this was because the library situation for Ray Carson um, is weird for me. Um, they don't have like a complete like the complete series that I was looking for 
and the weight, anyway, it was just a weird situation, and um, I really wanted to try her because Thoughts on Tomes, Sam, um, has recommended her really highly as well as some other folks here on YouTube who do, um, who read a lot of fantasy. They've pointed her out as somebody who's sort of like an unsung hero of YA fantasy just because she tends to have like more interesting and unique characters from what I can tell and um, doesn't fall into a lot of like kind of... Um, tropes that can get a little tired. So anyway, I wanted to try her and when I saw her on Book Outlet for a very reasonable price, I was like, okay, let's bypass, let's bypass this whole weird library situation and just like go ahead and grab them. And then another book I got off of Book Outlet was Scythe by Neil Shusterman. Now I've actually, actually never read anything by Neil Shusterman. Um, there's a few of his books that have sounded interesting to me, but I decided to go ahead and get this just because A, I've been hearing a lot of consistently interesting things, even if not everybody has loved this. They had interesting things to say about this book um, and second I was actually taught the premise of this really intrigues me I was talking with one of my friends the other day about like we were kind of having a debate as to whether or not death gives life meaning and I think you know this the premise of this book is that nobody dies anymore unless like there's a specific reason for you to and these are like the executioner guys I think of the people who don't get to live anymore but it's essentially a world without death and so anyway I was just intrigued premise wise by this so I decided to go ahead and grab a copy from Book Outlet. And then another fantasy I got was at the used bookstore and I grabbed this because um, I've never seen it in hardback at the used bookstore and when I looked on Amazon it is also hard to get it in hardback anymore so I decided to just go ahead and grab it and that is the Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. Now, many people consider him to be the best person writing fantasy today. Um, this is an adult fantasy, not a uh, YA. I also feel so weird saying adult fantasy. I feel like I should be in, like, adult fantasy. It's not that kind of adult fantasy. Um, I just mean uh, fantasy novels written for adults and not for teens. <laughs> um, anyway, he, you know, he's like a big player in that. The series is apparently supposed to be amazing. It getting Starting to read this does break my rule because the this series is not finished and I get a little, especially for big books like this, I get a little squicked out because I'm like, what if they don't finish? But I, I have faith that this is going to get finished and yeah, at some point, I mean, this is a contemporary classic and I'd really, I'd like to read it at some point, so. Here we go. And then this book I literally got because I was at $39 in my book outlet cart. I had a $5 coupon, which would take it to 34, but you have to have $35 to get free shipping. So I went looking for a 99 cent book and I found one called I Suck at Relationships So You Don't Have To by Bethany Frankel. I got this literally because I love, love The Real Housewives of New York City. She is arguably the most interesting housewife they've ever had on there and anyway I'm she she is fascinating to me so I want to just sort of like skim through this but really basically I just got this because I needed to top off my cart there you go and then finally you didn't think we could get through an entire haul without a little bit of Agatha Christie did you you didn't come on I've got two two books here that I am very happy to own. They are frivolous and I certainly don't need them, but I decided that I want them. And that is two hardback facsimile editions of two of my very favorite Agatha Christie books, Cards on the Table and Death on the Nile. Now, these are gorgeous, look, and they are replicas of the original covers that these books had. I got these off Book Depository and like, yeah, I'm gonna keep getting a few more. I don't wanna get her entire work in this edition but i decided that the books that i really love and you know what i'm putting i'm putting in the time to figure out which ones those are in project Poirot. um i want to figure out which ones i just really love and have them in this edition i, I just think it's a beautiful edition it's special i already have murder on the orient express and 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 then there were none in this particular edition and um yeah i know that i want to get some more like quaro investigates crooked house lord edgeware dies like a few other ones i want to get in this edition because like yeah they're some of my favorites so i feel a little guilty about this because this really is very uh frivolous spending but it's in my budget and i want them so yeah there is another big old haul for you guys it's just, it's just my thing. It's what I do. Um, but you know, I, a lot of those were from the used bookstore. A lot of them I got free because of points that I had. Um, I, you know, book outlet, I think I probably got like eight of them through that. So, you know, I definitely, I definitely spend money on books. Like if you look at like my extra expenses every month, books are pretty much my number one thing that I spend money on aside from necessities. But, uh, but yeah, I'm actually pretty pleased with the overall cost of such a large haul. Cause I think, I think I probably got all of those for a hundred dollars or less so yeah not bad but anyway um that will do it for april's book haul 
look for me again in May because this is what I do. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias. If you are so inclined, I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that will do it. I hope you're having a really great day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.